that could mark the transformation from old industries into new ones. Significant work began today to demolish the red car blast furnace with almost all the evidence of the site's steel making history to be removed within a year. It's hoped today will usher in a new phase of investment in the site and we can join Greg Steel there now. Greg. Well, Ian, history was made here today, or to put it another way, in fairness, history was ended. We're all only too well aware, aren't we, of the generations of men and women who worked here for very many years and the agony we've seen five years ago when this place closed up. Today, one last drop of agony that will start a year-long process that it's hoped will then lead to plenty of ecstasy here. The last rites have already long been read on Teesside Steel. Five years after the furnace fell silent, today was time to break the chain forever and begin the major demolition works of this site. Watching on, the leader of Red Car and Cleveland Council, her own father, worked here. I think he would have said, get on with it, girl. Let's get it down, let's get the jobs in and let's move forward. Very sad for the people who worked here, thousands of men that poured off this site. But I hope that the majority of them look at this and think this is progress. Minutes later, a horn sounded and a chimney stack fell. And that was just the start of it. Elsewhere, diggers began clawing away at steel structures, pulling them down like paper, ready to write a new story for this week. Before the crews moved in, we took a tour deep in the belly of the old works, ghosts everywhere of a site that once employed thousands. The dockets where men checked in, the old Christmas decorations in the control room before everyone checked out. We are now right up where very few ever tread. This is the top of the blast furnace. And beyond us are steelworks that will now become the largest demolition site in Europe. In the distance there, you can see the old boss plant, that cathedral-like building, which will be, along with the blast furnace, among the last structures to go in 12 months' time. Teesside's past now charged with making way for Teesside's future. Stephen Wilson, one of four generations of his family that worked here, ready just to let it go now. It's an icon, I can see this from my house. Um, can see it from the beach, can see it from miles away. But yeah, it'll be strange not to see it. Even my granddad worked here as a furnace man many, many years ago, my dad worked here. Um, so yeah, a little bit of sadness but it needs to go. Um, this land needs to be used for something better than what it is now. In the distance out to sea, a clue as to what's next. The huge wind turbine plant among the deals already struck for this site. Thousands of reasons to be cheerful, according to the Tees Valley Mayor. There are those who will see this coming down as a defeat, an end of an era. How do you see it? When you think of the loss of 3,000 jobs in 2015, this is a site that's going to deliver 20,000 jobs over the next 12 to 15 years. That's more money in people's pocket to look after themselves and their families. And it's also hope for future generations that they can get a job and have a good livelihood right here in Teesside. Teesside's proud industrial past was forged here, a cleaner, greener future now waiting to grow in its place. Once the year-long cleanup operation, demolition operation is complete, there are some very good reasons why this place will be attractive to those investors we've heard about. There are good road links, obviously. This site also has a rail link going right through it and a river very close by. And if you want another indicator of just how good things are looking, take a look at the board above the entrance site here. That's something that never used to be around here. Those are job adverts above the entrance way there. There are still no, nonetheless some people who think this site should have been kept as a monument to Teesside's past. This is an enormous cultural and heritage opportunity which has been missed. And at its worst, 
It's cultural and heritage vandalism because that single iconic structure represents 165 years and tens of thousands of working people's time and energy. That's something that has, in actual fact, already happened in countries like Germany, where they've had steel works that have suffered the same fate. But make no mistake, it's not going to happen here. The deals are already struck. This isn't the beginning of the end for Teesside Steel. This is the end of the end. Greg in red car. Thank you. Next tonight to the inquest into the death of a vulnerable young...